memorial dedication. My name is Gary Drysall, the voice of the Lions, and at this dedication we have asked special family and friends to speak and say a few words. We'd also like to welcome board president Brent Lee here as well. We'll have Stephen Ibarra, Tom Hunt, Ryan McCarthy, Coach McCarthy, Tina York, and in closing, Mark Dubasan. For this dedication ceremony, we have set up a particular time and a special place to honor and memorialize Tyler Llewellyn. Tyler was a student athlete here at Arlington who passed away tragically five days after a football scrimmage at Rubidoux High School. Today is his birthday, and we honor him on this day at 3.30. This time is extra special and coincides with the jersey number 33. At this time, I'd like to introduce our principal, Stephen Ibarra. Good afternoon. It's nice to see so many of you here today. Uh, but that's not a surprise for me because one of the things I've quickly learned in my first year here as principal at Arlington High School is what a tremendous community we have. I didn't know Tyler. Uh, I was a principal at a different school in our district when he was here. But when I hear his name, I imagine him to be like so many of our students at Arlington. And I imagine Tyler to be just like that student who's at the front of the office as I'm coming to work with my hands full of coffee and papers and I can't open the door, but the student gets up and opens the door for me. Uh, I see, to me, I imagine Tyler being just like that. I imagine Tyler being like those students who say hello to me or say, how's it going, Mr. Barr, as I walk around campus. And I imagine Tyler to be uh, like that student who's eager to tell me about the upcoming game or the latest victory and share the highlights as we, as we visit with one another. And I imagine him to be like so many of our students at Arlington who practice integrity and their character and share kindness with one another. Doing simple things that people don't notice, uh, like throwing your trash away or helping somebody pick up papers on a windy day when they drop their notebook. So I imagine Tyler to be just like so many of our students here at Arlington who have come to love and appreciate so much. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I know we're not perfect. So I imagine Tyler to be a little mischievous at times and uh, maybe get in trouble. Uh, because uh, as teenagers and as people, uh, we tend to make mistakes, but I imagine he learned from that as well. So I did not know Tyler, but by having the privilege and the honor to serve as principal at Arlington High School and getting to experience and appreciate this community and interact with our students, I feel like I, I know Tyler. So thank you again for being here. And thank you to all those who have worked so hard for this memorial from its very beginning. This memorial is something that we can all be very proud of. Next up, please welcome Tom Hunt, RUSD School Board Member. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Mr. Lee, for coming out, it's my colleague. This means a lot. Tyler's passing was tragic, yes, but, um, you know, Tyler was an organ donor, and so, and I'm sure his mom will talk a little bit about that, that a lot of, a lot of folks and a lot of lives were, were saved because of his. Um, it was, a, it was a tragedy, but it was also a high mark for as well at Arlington that the campus, the students, and the staff all handled the very difficult aspects of what was involved. In particular, in particular Coach Mack demonstrated what a great heart he has for his players and for the Arlington student body. The funding for this bench came out of proceeds, helped to raise, uh, helped to defray the cost we knew would be incurred with Tyler's memorial services, and when we expected hundreds of you and, and that was uh, Arlington kids and, and students and many of Tyler's other friends and family to attend. We wanted to have money for the, the dinner afterwards, the lunch afterwards. We raised enough from that cause from Riverside businesses who were very generous, who were moved by Tyler's death and, and, and who supported our schools to include, uh, and that included alumni of Arlington and many businesses here in Riverside, to, uh, to, uh, to be able to also afford this bench. Uh, as a member of the RUSD school board in Arlington being in my area, I took on that task and it was rewarding to see the community support for Tyler and for Arlington High. Yet, I want to share with you students, I had an additional motive to be involved more than just being a school board member. I'd like to share that with you. 
When I went to the hospital that Sunday afternoon to meet Tyler's parents and visit with the students who were keeping a vigil there for Tyler, I noted when meeting Tyler's mom, Tina, that she had big, soft eyes and looked familiar to me. And as I just was thinking that, there goes the mic, uh, I heard from my left, hey, Tom Hunt. And there was my junior high and high school classmate, Bobby Bose, Tyler's aunt and his mom's older sister. The big eyes running in the Bose family, I guess. When I knew that Tyler's family was one I'd grown up with, in particular, his aunt Bobby, and then Tyler from that, and his family from that Sunday afternoon and his passing a few days later became personal to me. Tyler was, as, as Mr. Yabarro said, was a fine student athlete here at Arlington. He was also a dedicated and kind person. His cousin Aiden was here at Arlington at the same time Tyler was attending. His cousin was a member of Arlington's special ed program. Tyler, of course, loved his cousin. He understood the nature and personality, sweet personality, of the special ed student. He successfully encouraged his fellow Lion football teammates to come and spend quality time with special ed students here in Arlington. As Mr. Barrow said, Tyler was kind. Just like I remember so many years, so many decades ago, the kindness and good nature of his Aunt Bobby, as well as his Uncle Larry, who was a good friend with my then girlfriend, now my wife, and uh, girlfriend's younger brother. They were football teammates. I'll wait for the train a little bit, if you don't mind. What I'm saying to each of you students, individual students here at Arlington, is that these other students that are around you today, the ones you'll see on campus come Monday, will likely be part of your life for a long time, quite possibly a lifetime to come. Bobby Bowes remains a friend of me this day. Mrs. Coach, your favorite teacher here at Arlington, her older brother Rip Earner and I were classmates from the sixth grade to high school, to junior high, to high school, to RCC, and on to UCLA. He is an attorney here in town, and Mrs. Coates, well, my wife and Phyllis Irwin, Mrs. Coates are classmates and still care for one another. If my example of high school friendships very likely being lasting, with Tyler as your example, treat one another as Tyler would with kindness. Treat one another with respect. And when you sit, to come sit on this bench, remember that the young man to whom it is dedicated as a proud Arlington Lion, as a dedicated student athlete, is a young man who would be the type of student you should all, we should all strive to be. And then the type of student that when some 44 years past your graduation, sorry Bobby, and this wonderful school, you will still want to have a close relationship with one another. You would want to be the type of clean classmate they all know that if you and your family were going through tough times, including the tragic death of a family member, that, that you could be someone they wouldn't be surprised to come through that hospital door to visit. And if they needed your help in all respectful aspects and talents, uh, that you'd be there. I thank the Bose family, Tina and Bobby, Tyler's parents, his brother Marcus, and you, the Arlington High School student body, for allowing me to be the privilege of assisting in Tyler's family during the difficult times and any time since that August day, some nearly four years ago this August, with the privilege of being there for my high school classmates, Larry and Bobby Bose. You know, you seniors were, were freshmen with Tyler, and, and uh, in a few years, like a lot of memorials at campuses, people won't remember what is there. They'll see the 33, they'll see the lion, they'll see the black. But I'm going to ask you to, to pass on to them what Tyler was about. And you look at that number 33, right? It's an equal number. It, it represents the way he treated people. Equity, equality, none, none better than the other. I'm no better than you. We're both trying to make it through this school and this, and this life. And so pass on that rule of 33. That's Tyler's rule here. And uh, remember to tell them, uh, you know, what a fine person he was. Now, we did have a small amount left in the Tyler Fund, so I closed it out yesterday, and would like to give this check to Athletic Director Mark Dubasson to be used by the Lions football team. It isn't much, a little under 300, but it's enough maybe, Mark, to fund an after-school meal or after-school game for, for the Lions, a dinner on Tyler for his forever Lion teammates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Now we have one of Tyler's position coaches, as well as his track coach. He was all CIF and all county MVP. Please welcome Arlington alumnus, Ryan McCarthy. It's an honor to speak on such a fine human being. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan McCarthy. 
and I had the privilege of getting to know Tyler in the capacity of his football coach and his position group, as his track coach, and I also worked as a campus supervisor here at Arlington. In that time, I developed a very close personal relationship with him, and I watched him as a silent observer. I noticed how highly regarded he was by his teammates, his classmates, and everyone he came in contact with. A true light for all. Tyler, whether he was aware of it or not, understood the true meaning of life, living in the moment and making the best of every situation. It was a joy to watch him while I worked as a campus supervisor during lunch, while he ate with his classmates under the eaves of the cafeteria. The other students gravitated toward him like a moth to a flame. His energy was undeniable. People that know about Coach Mack's trainings with Regiman know that it wasn't easy and it wasn't always fun. I particularly remember a really hot day. We were out speed training on the football field and him and one of his teammates, Timmy Weaver, got into a shouting match, yelling back and forth at each other, I love speed training. And they would yell back, no, I love speed training. And I'm sure that wasn't how they actually felt, but it was a great attitude towards a very tough task. In track, Tyler ran the hurdles, and I was his hurdles coach. And I remember having some great talks about school, relationships, life, you name it. He asked so many questions and had a maturity about him unlike most high school kids. Our time together flew by in the afternoons at football and track, and we had more fun than I can remember. He felt more like a little brother to me than a player of mine. After losing him so suddenly and tragically, I couldn't help but wonder, why did this happen? What could I have done differently to protect him? After his death, I was very depressed and very angry. It made me question why I coach and why we even play this child's game. Answers were very hard to come by. When I really got down to what I took from this experience, I took a page out of Tyler's book. I searched for the silver lining, which was to live in the moment. We cannot control what happens to us in life, but we can control how we look at it, our perspective. Perspective is completely in your control and nobody can take that from you. Change your lens, change your life. What Tyler inadvertently taught me was to win each and every moment Whatever the circumstance, spin it to make it a positive. Make your life a garden and cultivate your relationships with your family, your friends, your coworkers, and even strangers on the street. Pour into your relationships and shower them with love like there is no tomorrow. You'll see your relationships grow and blossom into beautiful works of art. Hug and kiss your loved ones. Say I love you when you feel it. Be kind to everyone, especially when they don't deserve it public, smile at strangers, hold open doors, let people go ahead of you. When you approach life in this way, you will become an undeniable light recognized by everyone you come in contact with. Whatever energy you put into this world, it will be returned to you. When you make the choice to live your life in this manner, life will become a party for you. People will be excited to see you. You'll be greeted with smiles and the warmth of love and life. When opportunity arises, you are the first people first person people will think of just by being someone people want to be around. This is my silver lining. To live in the moment and try to make the best of every situation. I thank Tyler for that and it's changed my life. Tyler, I know you're looking down on us with your big smile. I love you and I miss you very much. Your friend Ryan. Thank you. Next up is a man who was Tyler's head coach who began his tenure here at Arlington in 1999. A man who truly needs no introduction, but I'm going to call his name. This is Coach McCarthy. Hello, great to see everybody here. Um, first of all, I want you guys to know, I know your principal here, and I want you to know that he played for us at Fontana High School. That guy right there is a great football player. And we had some great teams in Fontana in the 80s. We won the national championship in 87, and we were state champs in 89, number two in the nation. So this guy knows his football. He knows his sports. So if you go into his office, he tries to tell you, like, act like he doesn't know much about football. He does. You know, the, the Ibarras are a football family. And I know Dick Brewick, the legendary coach, is very proud of him. So I, I th just think you guys are so lucky to have an administration like you have here and, and, a, and a principal and Steve Ibarra. So, um, you know, congratulations to you guys. Uh, obviously, I was a head coach here when Tyler was here. And there's a lot of things we talk about, guys, but maybe sort of what Ryan said is, you know, there's a couple things going to happen in your life 
And adversity defines all of us. It brings out the best and the worst in people. And we saw that, you know, back when Tyler died. And what I do remember is that his parents took what is the worst thing that could happen to you in your life, and they turned it into a positive. And I had some real issues and struggles with why Tyler died. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we prayed. I remember right out here on this field when I got the, uh, the call from Bobby. In my mind, I was thinking, he's going to wake up, and Bobby's going to tell me he woke up, and then obviously it wasn't the news I was looking for. But in life, there's two things going to happen to us, and we got to figure out, is it consequences or circumstances? Okay, consequences is something we, we cause, right? All right? We don't practice hard. We don't work together as a team. We don't listen to, to Coach Lunsford. We might lose, huh? But circumstances are something we didn't control. These were circumstances. But the only thing you can do with circumstances is control how you handle it. And like I said, we saw the best and the worst in people. And Tyler, it's, it's funny because I, uh, I picked this rose coming out of my house today. And I always think of Tyler at this time of year. I know this is his birthday and stuff. But this was Tyler. Like this rose just getting ready to bloom. You know, and, and it bothered me. But then I thought, you know, God said, you know, I'm going to take this because this is the best rose there. And the only thing I could wrap my head around is you got a young kid, Tyler, who at a young age, I don't even know how he would think of it, his age decided that, you know, he's going to donate his organs to somebody. You know, and, and like, uh, like Ryan said, we had some goofy training stuff, some hard training stuff, and, and Tyler always embraced it. I mean, if you play for me, you know, what's this blowing in, John Breeze? I mean, John Bird, it's the ocean breeze blowing in, huh? We have all these guys saying, man, hey. Can you, can you feel like ocean breeze blowing in? The kids are like, the ocean's way over, you know. And Tyler go, no, the ocean's right over there, you know. So he was one of those guys that bought into all the goofy stuff I did. But he was a leader. And you guys have that chance to be leaders. We always talk about we want you to be a great person more than anything. So if you ask your parents, what do you want out of your son? We want him to be a great person first, right? They're a great student. They're a great athlete, football player, etc. And what a great person does is make everybody else around him better, huh? Um, I don't know, Rich, is it still in the weight room we used to have up there as, as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens man, right? And that was Tyler. He made everybody else around him better. So that's, that's my charge to you guys, and particularly you football players, because this was Tyler. He would have been our starting safety. We, uh, Remy, who played safety for us, ended up at Sac State. And, you know, those two guys would have probably been the best two safeties we ever had here. And Tyler was plucked out. But he was plucked out. Now there's somebody running around with a heart in there, with the heart of the lion, huh? There's probably somebody that's going there. Wow, you feel like ocean breeze coming in? You know, and they have no idea what they're doing there. They're going, hey, I love speed training. <laughs> the other thing I used to say, all the guys give me grief. Like John Bird played for me and, and Ryan and everything. We used to have three a day. So you guys think it's, you know, so it used to be three a days here. And Stevie knows, huh? Because he had three a days back in the day too. So, but we've been out for three days and it's, Considerably harder than those the, the thing we use now, you know, for the meat for the meter now. And, and what would Tyler be saying? This is Arlington football weather, man. You know, and so that was his mindset. You know, whatever it was, he's looking at the positive. So can you be that young man, right? Can you be that person? Your whole life makes everybody else around you better. Great person, huh? As iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens man. And then getting back to adversity, you know, we we um, what we did is we had, we figured it out. My wife and I came down here one day and we're in the film room and, and we said, you know, we got 33 practices left and that was Tyler's number. So we went down to the sign shop and we had 33 tiles made because kids were, you know, kids were all over and it was tough on them. And after every practice, we celebrated. We went up there and initialed everybody's initial that made the practice that day. And what we said is, hey, if you make it through this, that's 33 days. You do that 10 times, you made it through a year because you're going to have some years that aren't too good, huh? Tough times don't last, tough people do all those type of things. And those kids made it through. I don't know if there's any group that I'm more proud of than that group and the group that followed them just because, you know, they had to go through that, which you guys have had to go through too. Now you come out on the other side. But the York family, the Wellen family, they took the worst thing that could happen in life and they turned it into positive. You know, the worst thing that could possibly happen. Every person's nightmare here, they turned it into a positive. Tyler lives on through all the people that he's you know, donating the organs to. And like I said, those guys are over there feeling something, and it's Tyler there. So he lives on. And, and Tina and I have been on that walk a few times with Bobby. And inevitably, we always see somebody with a number 33, huh? Remember last year walking, all of a sudden it's like 
She goes, wow, look at that guy. He's got a 33 on his back. So as Tom Hunt said, that number is unique. And the other thing I just want to uh, preface is the people at Arlington were amazing. Tom was on the school board then. They came down, they're amazing. Our, our administration was amazing. So we're, we're lucky, all of us guys, to be in RUSD where they put kids first, you know. And I know you have a principal and administration that put, put kids first. So as you walk on that bench, so you come over one night, you see some old guy sitting on that bench over there. Don't kick me off. I'm just coming down after hours to kind of sit there because I, I watched many a sunrise and sunset right up there, as I'm sure Coach Lunsford has or will. And, and so I'm going to come down. I'm not even sure where is the bench. It's over here. So, oh, there it is. So I'm sure you see me sitting there watching a the practice. I'm not scouting, Coach. I'm just, you know, come down here and, and sit and watch and, you know, and, and revel in it. So, um, you know, someday we'll see Tyler, right? And we, we've got to go off on the right side. Though. So I just want, you know, like Ryan said, I, I, you know, kindness is a weakness, guys. Right? Obedience is a weakness. Somebody tells you to do something, it's not weak if you do it. You know, be a good person, be a good guy. You never know what anybody else is going through when you see him. Okay? So just try and be a little better person. Like I said, I challenge you to be great. Make everybody else around you better. If coach gives you something to do, do it. Do it better than anybody else. And that's all you can ultimately do is to control that. So once again, I thank you and I appreciate you. and. Um, I wish all the luck to Arlington, man. This is a great place. And everybody here is really lucky to be here. We're all lucky to be a part of RUSD where kids come first and they really care about us as human beings. Thank you. Thank you, Coach McCarthy. Our next speaker is Tina York. This is Tyler's mother. fair coming up after everybody else has said everything I was going to say. <laughs> um, I really want to thank Tom Hunt for spearheading this and uh, our USD, uh, Mr. Ibarra, Mr. Dubasan for um, helping me with this, helping me through this, and all of Arlington High School. Our whole community here in Arlington, Riverside, um, my EDA family, this whole community just wrapped themselves around us and continues to bless us and it's always just amazing to us. Um, dedicating this beautiful bench on honor of Tyler is, uh, especially on today, which as I mentioned is his birthday today, Tyler would have been 20 years old. So. This is kind of a, a little birthday celebration. That being said, I'm hoping that people will remember when they enjoy this bench, more of what he, how he lived rather than how he died. As they said, Tyler was very generous when he was a little boy. I caught him packing two of everything in his lunch pail, and when I asked him what he was doing, there was a, a boy at school who didn't have lunch, and so he was going to take lunch for him. He was, he was always sharing, he was always bringing um, other kids home to spend the night, and uh, before I'd ever even met them. Um, he always wanted to include people in his circle, and um, I always thought that was a beautiful thing. It was a mischievous side to Tyler too, though. So, um, as though he would have been that student to help you, you know, when your papers blew all over the place, he would have laughed at you first. <laughs> so, um, or if you fell down, you know, he would have, you know, snickered, but then helped you up. So, um, there was a little mischief in him as well. Um, as I said, I want this bench to be a memory of how he lived rather than how he died. Tyler decided to be an organ donor after a conversation that um, his dad and I were having about us being organ donors. And um, he didn't even have his driver's license. He loved football so much, in fact, that he didn't complete driver's ed because when it came time for him to do his driving tests, football season had started and he said it would have to wait so he put driving aside to so that he wouldn't miss football but he came into a conversation and 
heard what we were talking about and decided right then he wanted to be an organ donor. So when they told us that Tyler was not going to be coming home with us, it wasn't a hard decision at all to choose to donate. But not only was it his organs, but he was an eye and tissue donor as well. So he saved eight lives and countless other people um, benefited from the donations that, that Tyler left as his parting gift from this world. I want people to remember how he lived, what he gave, how he inspired his teammates, how he, as Coach said, when the weather was crummy, no matter what, whether it was raining or sweltering hot or windy, it was always Arlington football weather. And he would always say that I, I love that. You know, I love this and just try to encourage his, his teammates. We could have been angry with football when we lost Tyler. But I saw the camaraderie that came out of this. I saw the community and I couldn't be angry. I saw the, the friendships that were built on that football field, and I couldn't be angry. So all I do ask is that you're careful, and that if it doesn't, if something doesn't feel right, tell your coach, tell your parents. We want you to give it your all, but not to the point that Tyler did. And because you know we don't know whether or not this happened early in the game or not. We'll never know, and I don't want to know. I don't want a student knowing that that was that he was involved in the play that might have ended Ty's life. I don't want someone living with that. <clears throat> Sorry. This community has always been so such a blessing to us and I just want to thank you all for this bench and for the constant support and um, I hope that you will all continue to do that with each other and continue to pass on the love, the support, and the blessings to each other and um, go home tonight, hug your family closer, make sure that you live in the moment, that you embrace every day because you don't know when it will, might be your last or the last of someone close to you.